Hello and welcome to this tutorial on APIs. So I got several requests to do API, to do a tutorial on APIs. And so here goes. So as many of you already know, an API stands for application interface. So what exactly does this mean? So what this means is simply that there's an application somewhere and then you're going to interface with it. So you're going to interact with the application. So you're going to use what is known as an interface. So that thing you're using to interact with uh, the application is called an interface. Okay, so application interface. So there are several kinds of APIs. For example, uh, when you're browsing a website, so let me go to just a normal website here. So this is my own website uploaded here. Now, on any website, there are links here, of course. So what's happening is that when I click on a link here, it just looks like it's a simple click, but it isn't because there's so much going on in the background. For one, when I click on this link, I get these products here, right? So what happened here is that uh, information was retrieved from the database and then it was displayed here, including images and the like. So this is a, a UI or user interface, but it's an, an API as well, because what I'm really doing is talking to the database without actually typing in any queries that a normal programmer would type. But otherwise, that's what I'm doing. So the process of retrieving information from the uh, database is abstracted to a simple click. So I just click here and everything is done in the background. So this is already an API. So you are, when you're browsing the internet, you're already using an API. So you might be asking, uh, so what's the point of those other APIs that we see being advertised, et cetera, et cetera? Well, the issue comes in here. So let's say, for example, here you have these products and for some reason you want somebody to retrieve information about these products, right? So let's say I want to retrieve, uh, I, I have interest in this website and I just want to know the prices of the items here. Let's say I have a customer that wants to know what Milo costs but I don't want to physically go to this website. I want to have a bot check for me on the website without me actually visiting the website in the browser. So this is where the second type of uh, the normal API that we're talking about here comes in. Because what I would do as a programmer without having to talk to the owner of this website is I would crawl this site. That's what it's... Uh, that's what they call it. So I will retrieve information from this site. Now, once I do that, it's going to come with all this HTML and uh, CSS with it, right? So now it will be my job to get, uh, to create some code that will parse this information so that I'm remaining with only the names and the prices of these items. Then I can get the price and the name of the item. So if I look at the page source here, if I click a view uh, page source. Oh, that's a selection there. Let me just say view page source. So if I do a crawl on this website, this is the information I'm going to get. So it's going to be up to me now to look for prices and look for items in this mess. So this is not very good, especially if uh, the owner of the website does want people to know prices from his website. So what the owner would do to save people all this time, you see the, here's the meat, goodies, etc, etc. You see, so I would have to look for the price here and match those with what I'm seeing here. So this would be a painstaking process. So what the owner of this website can do is he can say, okay, I'll give you a section of my website where you can retrieve this information directly from the, the database so that you don't have to go through all these tags here you can get direct information from the posts table on my website. Okay, so which is a good thing because now people can retrieve information and bring it to themselves and use that information in a good way. 
However, the problem comes in because to retrieve information from my database, you need to add queries. So that would be a risk because then I'm open to uh, cross-site scripting and SQL injection. So in that case, to prevent people from doing that, we're going to use a system that already works, which is the URL system here. So for example, I can send some post data or get data to that website, which now wants to give its information to other users for, for them to use that information. For example, prices of these items here. So I will retrieve, I will receive that information. It's going to be like, for example, if I go to the search here and I want to find this Milo bar, right? I'm just going to click type Milo there and then it's going to do a search. In the background, what's happening is that it went to the uh, it went to the database, ran a query, and brought back this information right here. So if you look at the URL here at this point, you're going to see that it's shop, and then there's a question mark here, and there's find, just in case you can't see this URL, I'm going to copy it onto here. So we can go through it a little bit better. So as you can see here, uh, this is the URL. Forget about the crazy URL. I'm using a free uh, service on this web host. But the thing is, the important part is here. So you see it's shop and then there's a question mark and then there's find is equal to Milo. So this is the parameter that uh, enables me to search for a particular item like Milo here. So this is well understood. So the page is shop question mark, then we have these parameters here. Find is equal to that. So I can add several other parameters here. As long as I put the and, then I can do, uh, let's say, uh, date is equal to, and then I add some other parameter just like that, and type is equal to, etc., etc. So all these parameters will be taken by the database, and then something will be done. So the code has to be written by the owner of the website on what to do with this information once it's received. So now instead of them going to the website like this, I could put a, another page called API like this on my website, right? It's called API. I can call it anything, but in this case, we're talking about APIs. So API, and then it's going to have this find Milo. However, the difference is that when I'm browsing in the website here, I'm going to receive all this HTML around the product because I want it to be uh, nice and appealing when I retrieve this information. But I, the owner can create an API version where it just brings the raw information. For example, just the product name, the product image, the price, and except, uh, any details about the product without the whole page here. So that information is easier to parse. And then I can utilize that information in my own website without having to know the structure of the database that I'm reading that information from. All I need to know is that if I type this URL and then I put the parameter like find is equal to Milo, then it's going to bring back information about this particular product here. I don't need to know anything else about the website. I just need to know this. So when we do this, when we retrieve information from a website, without its HTML, just the raw data. That becomes an API, okay? So that's the application interface we're talking about here. So it's nothing special. It's just exactly the same as browsing a website. The only difference is that at the end there, it retrieves only raw information. So let me give you an example of this very thing. So if we go to the Googles. So we Google free API for testing. You get a bunch of APIs here that are free for testing. But I like this particular one, JSON placeholder. So I'm going to right click here, open this in a new tab. Uh, just a simple website that can... Uh... Now, don't uh, just use this one. You can use any API. There's, there's plenty of them. There's one here where there's a list, free API, top 15 APIs. You can check those out as well. I'll open this while we look at the other one as well. So let's come to this one here, JSON placeholder. So very simple stuff here. 
Now they even show you how you can fetch some data here. Okay, so there's a URL here, obviously, and then we can search, we, we can click here, and then it's going to bring us some data. So as you can see, this data is raw JSON because there are two ways you can get this data. You can get it, not really two ways, there are plenty of ways. There's plain text, there's JSON, there's XML. It entirely depends on your use case. In our case here, this is JSON. Now, you don't need any of this fancy code to do this. As you can see, this is a URL right there. Okay, that's where we're getting this information. So if I just copy this URL here, copy that URL, and just open a new tab, <clears throat> put the URL in the browser, and uh, type that. As you can see, I've gotten the information here. It's showing the information as JSON, but I can see it as raw data. This is raw data here, okay? This is just a string that was returned. It's on, it only looks fancy here because the browser has added these uh, enter, or uh, what do you call these, courage returns, right? But otherwise, uh, it's just plain text, okay? So there's title here completed. So all this information is just that. So if we go back to the same one here, it shows you how to get information, more information from it. There's a, it shows you what type of resources they have. So they have a hundred posts, they have 500 comments, they have hundred albums, 5,000 photos, 200 to do's and 10 users. So here, what we are retrieving, if we go here, you see that uh, the URL says to do's and one. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit here. So if I change that one to two, like that, I get a different value here. So I'm going to get a different to do. And that is, you see that? That's different. That's a different record and the ID is two. So if you notice what's happening here, it's exactly what's happening when you try to browse something like this. You see, there's a question mark there. Find is equal to Milo. If we come back here, uh, there's no question mark here, but it's just a simple URL as well. It's just using cleaner URLs, but it's the same concept. There's two parameters here, the to-dos, and then the number representing the ID of the thing we're retrieving here. Plain and simple. There's also, uh, if for example, I don't, how many to-dos are here? Let me check for a second. Okay, there's too many. Let's try users because there are 10 users only. I can put users here, say users slash one. And there we go. I get all these users here. This is user number one. This is information about that user. But since there are 10 users, if I don't supply a parameter here, it knows that I want all the users. So it's going to retrieve information about all the users. So this is exactly the same as if you are browsing for uh, items on a website you specify the page number, how many items to get, and then you get all these items here. Look at that. Easy peasy, okay? However, we are trying to retrieve this information without going to the browser itself, right? We want to retrieve it using code. So this is where the whole interacting with an API comes in using code. All right, so hopefully that is understood and in this case, uh, to match that one, we would have to put these like this for cleaner URLs, right? This would be an API as well. So what I want you to take away from this is that an API is nothing special really. It's just a website. The only difference with a normal website is that when you're normally browsing, you get information that has all the HTML and CSS combined, okay? So the item here has HTML, CSS, and all the nice things to make it look appealing. However, when you go and retrieve the same information from an API on the same website, you're going to get the raw information. So I can get only the information that I need for the items, maybe and their prices, etc. So we have several APIs that are run by big companies, Google, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all these APIs allow you to get information from those companies and use it for yourself. So this is what we want to learn how to do, how to get information from a, an API. And we're not going to do those fancy APIs, just something simple, just to give you the general idea of how things go. 
maybe we're going to go to the advanced ones and so on. We'll see about that. And the last thing you have to remember is we're going to use two methods to connect. The first one, we're going to use just pure PHP. Okay. And then the second way, we're going to use some JavaScript, which is also uh, known as Ajax, a synchronous uh, reading of data from another website. So these are the two methods we're going to use. We're going to start with PHP, do the simple stuff, and then uh, do JavaScript as well, which is even simpler than PHP actually. Okay, so hopefully my explanation hasn't been too boring and too long. Hopefully you've learned something and I will see you in the next video.